Hey guys, welcome back to the Wandering Wind. I hate making videos like this because I really hate having to talk about politics, but it's important that we know who we're dealing with and who we're dealing against when it comes to um, this kind of rhetoric, this kind of behavior, and just this kind of evil, honestly. Evil, evil, evil crap. So, um, today we had the... Madison Square Garden event, a mirror almost of the 1939 Nazi Party rally in Madison Square Garden right before World War II began in earnest. The, um, the party at the time had been trying to garner support in America for Nazism, and they unfortunately did find a few far, far off field kind of folk that thought, oh, this is a great idea, and let's go with this. So, um, yeah, let's just take a look at some of the imagery and stuff that I found from that rally back in 1939. First of all, we had this photo. A, an America first, one God, one flag. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know what the heck they were thinking, but you can see obviously they're, you know, they're in clan garb using the cross as a kind of, smoke screen to try and look like they're just church pe people who want to have America be better than it is or whatever. And, uh, yeah, so actually I might be able to find a better picture of that. Let me see what I can grab. I doubt it though. I bet a lot of people want those pictures scrubbed th from the internet. I do not blame them. Yeah, I'm not finding anything else. I can't really make out the photo on there, but um, so for the Madison Square Garden rally, they had a litany of different um, speakers. So I'll just go through a, a lot of them. They had J.D. Vance, of course, Vice President nominee. They had Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House, Stefanik, Donalds, Tulsi Gabbard, Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> I think that's pretty funny. Probably the first um, paid gig he's gotten in a while since he got fired. Um, Robert Kennedy Jr. Uh, how far are you fallen, buddy? Laura Trump, Eric Trump, Donald Trump Jr., Elon Musk who's still an, a, a big geek, like always. Dan Scavino, Stephen Miller, uh, this guy frustrated me. So I'll just go ahead and I'll, I'll play this clip I found of Stephen Miller being an absolute tool and speaking on... <sighs> disregard all this crap. This is just from RSBN, but it's the clearest clip I could find. The cartels are gone. The criminal migrants are gone. The gangs are gone. America is for Americans and Americans only. All right. So if America is for Americans and Americans only, Mr. Stephen Miller, then what happens to Melania? What happens to Elon? Because Elon is not only a, a, an immigrant, but he's also... He was, at one point, an illegal immigrant. You know why? Because, because he was working on a, on a student visa. A student visa does not allow you to gain um, profitable employment under the law. And yet, when he started his first company, he was, wor he was under a student visa in the United States. So, you want to... Um, Walk that back a second, or do you want to just keep on 
keep on with it. <laughs> you want you want to keep on it with it? The gangs are gone. America is for Americans and Americans only. Okay, well, you you said it. I guess we had to follow through. Bye bye Elon. Bye bye Melania. Bye bye all the all the hardworking immigrants that made our country great. Um, because okay, one of the things that I kept hearing, and I hate hearing it from people, is they're taking our jobs. They're not taking your jobs. You know why? Because you wouldn't work a, a minimum wage job sweeping floors if your life depended on it because you have so much entitlement built up into your brain because of the way that the American society has conditioned us to think. We don't think of it as, oh, well, it's at least it's honest work. No, we think of it as beneath us. That's what we think. A lot of us, a lot of Americans think, oh, well, I would never do that job because that job is beneath my station. I would never do that job because that job is demeaning. And yet these people who come into our country seeking asylum, seeking a safe place to live away from the cartels, away from the trafficking, away from the drugs, they take that menial job that we think is nothing and they work it at the best of their ability because they know, they know the value of having employment of any kind, any kind. It doesn't matter what. So I'll tell you what, you tell me, you show me an illegal immigrant that comes to a, comes into our country and gets a six figure job at, as a CEO of a major company. And then I'll believe you when you say that they're taking our jobs until then sit down and shut up because you're obviously not educated enough to know anything. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of ticked off about this. I have great people as my neighbors. They're illegal immigrants, but you know, at this point in time, depending on how Trump talks, if he gets in office, that might not even save them. That might not even save them. Um, we continue. We have folks like um, Dana White, CEO of the UFC, Tucker Carlson, Brooke Rollins, CEO of America First Policy Institute, Lovely, C. Whitcoff, a founder of the Whitcoff Group, um, <laughs> Howard Lutnick, chairman of of the Trump 2024 transition team, Grant Cardone, a CEO, Sergio Gore, Right for America PAC, Michael Harris Jr., Death Row Records, Tiffany Justice, Moms for Liberty, Lee Greenwood, the same guy who helped him make the Bible, which, by the way, they're still pushing to have sold the school systems, even though they had to tone down the... the limitations that made it to where only they could buy that Bible. Uh, Christopher Macchio, opera singer. Sid Rosenberg, New York radio personality. Oh, 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 and here's one. Here's one. They had in the lineup Dr. Phil. Yeah, Dr. Phil, of all people. They had Dr. Phil on stage. I wonder why. Maybe it's because, maybe it's because they know they need people that can sound convincing, even if they're spouting bullcrap. Because that's all that tonight was. Here's the thing. It got so bad, it got so bad, that they had to literally fact check Donald Trump and his rhetoric at the rally on CNN. They had to cut away. Here, watch, watch, watch. I'll show you to it. I'll show it to you. I'll show it. It's, I would say it's funny, but it's not. It's not funny at all. Oh, watch, watch, watch. You are watching a rally from Madison Square Garden with former President Donald Trump, where we are hearing scores of lies from the former president. Uh, he has come on stage uh, and, and said a number of things that are just not true, starting with a number of things on immigration. He repeated his lies that there was no relief money for victims of uh, the hurricanes in North Carolina and Florida and other states because he claims uh, that the government gave it all to migrants. And yeah. He's still spouting that same tired lie about, 
Oh, well, they gave all the money to the migrants, so that's why they don't have any money for it. Bull crap. You know what you and your party did. You voted against giving extra relief, and then you guys went to recess until after the elections are over. Because you know you can run on that. You know you can run on, oh, well, we don't have any money. Well, you know who would have got, gotten you more money if if we were in Trump and all the other people that you're going to vote in? Because, of course, you are. And that there was none left. That is patently untrue. FEMA had to set up a website to debunk that. And some people have not uh, gone and gotten help that they needed uh, because of those lies. He also repeated another lie uh, that uh, in Springfield, that thousands of immigrants were dumped in Springfield, Missouri, illegally. In fact, the city website says that Haitian immigrants are there legally under the Immigration Parole Program. Yeah, that's the other thing, you know. (laughs) He even got the wrong Springfield when he was talking about it during the debate a few, about a month ago. Um, <laughs> Haitian migrants are not illegals. They're actually here illegally. They're, uh, although he was talking about Springfield, Ohio, too, but still. And that the, uh, they independently chose to move there. Uh, they were not sent by any program. Again, we have heard number of lies. He also started talking about the fact that he thinks Kamala Harris would put a draft in place. It's worth noting there is no active draft in place. He, that, he, he has also talked about the economy. When a number of economists have pointed out that the tariffs that Trump continues to talk about and want to put into place would harm the American economy and truly harm American consumers who would see the prices of goods go up. Yeah, so um, basically Trump lies. Trump continues to lie. Trump knows nothing but to lie. The fact that he doesn't do anything, the fact that he doesn't do anything except for spout the same tired lines again and again and again. Not lies, lines, lines. You know, he's he's up there while he's talking and he's saying, oh, well, I don't need a teleprompter. But when 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 Kamala's teleprompter went on the blitz, she didn't know what to do. The thing is, the reason why he doesn't need a teleprompter is he never follows the darn thing anyway. He doesn't follow the thing. You know what he does? He goes off the cuff and then they have to beg him through the teleprompter to ask a question or answer a question, you know, because we all saw that picture, right? We all saw that picture. It's it's a ridiculous thing that we're getting to this point in America where oh well it's it's less about it's less about being being um it's it's less about being helpful or being being factually correct and it's more about oh well this is the way I w- I want it to be so this is the way I'm going to tell it or whatever you know and I'm I'm tired of it I'm tired of it I'm tired of this whole I'm tired of the election season. I want it to be over, but I also want him out. Seriously, I want him out. I don't want him in. I don't want him anywhere near the White House. I don't want him anywhere near the the, the Senate. I don't want him anywhere near any public office. You know where I want him? I want him either in jail or, like he's been threatening, down in Venezuela. Moved away. Moved all of his stuff away. That way he doesn't have to even worry about it. He can just stay out of all of our politics, everything else. You know, he threatened to move out of the country last time he lost. He didn't. He didn't. But you know what? If he actually takes, if he actually keeps his word this time, that will be the only time I will ever thank Donald Trump for any dang thing because Lord knows we need something good in the world. We need him to stop spreading these lies and this rhetoric that is just dividing our country because Lord knows we got enough trouble without needing him dividing not only the nation in half, but also dividing our churches. That's what drives me absolutely up the wall. My church is a mainly conservative church, but even inside of it, there are Democrats, there are, there are centrists, there are people who just could not care less about the elections this time around. And I've made it I've made it known I do not care about the elections. I get sideways looks from people. Not that they're judging me, but just they they, they want to know why. And when I tell them why, they're like, ah, well, you're just listening to mainstream news. Uh, yeah, because the mainstream news actually 
reports on stuff. You know what Fox News does? Puts out puff pieces to make Trump's ego look bigger and feel better. You know, that's what it does. It doesn't do anything to benefit the American people. They just manage to make Trump look good because that's their whole mission is to make Trump look good, make everyone else look horrible, keep the voter base happy. And you know what? I'm glad that the, the, the polls that they keep showing are fake and that they've had to pay for them because that just means it's a lot closer than they want to admit and that most likely Trump is going to lose in nine days. And that's going to be a world of weight off of a lot of our soldiers because we won't have to hear about the orange ape ever again. Anyway, guys, I'm sorry. I had to go on this rant, but it is just so frustratingly obvious to me, to me, that this is not an option to continue doing the same stupid thing. <sighs> so with that, I just want to let you guys know I voted for Kamala Harris. If you don't like it, you're welcome to leave. If you don't mind it, you're welcome to stay. I voted for the lesser of two evils because the Lord knows inviting him back into the White House is just evil on his uh, for his part because the Lord knows he's aging to the point to where he shouldn't be anywhere other than a nursing home. He can't string the two sentences together without rambling. He calls it weaving, but it's rambling. He has no coherent thoughts half the time. He starts and stops a sentence in the middle of it and then wonders why people question his mental faculties. It's like, dude, if anyone other than you did that, they'd be committed. They wouldn't be commended. They wouldn't be put in the White House. You know why they're trying to put you in the White House? Because they know as soon as they get you in, then J.D. Vance can sign off on something that says that you're incompetent. He can become president and the speaker can become vice president. And then whoever's next in line can become speaker. And then they'll have the entire thing locked, stocked, and barreled before you can say hamburger <laughs> or whatever, you know. I don't get it. I do not get it. Why are you so insistent that you're right? Why can't you see that your voter base is using you? That your constituents are using you? Because you see yourself as the savior of the white world. Or at least the savior of America. I don't know that you have enough self-awareness to see that you're really only appealing to the extremists in our, in our nation. But that's the reality, buddy. I wish you all the best because you're a human being. I pray that you get the care that you need in your older age, but I also pray that that care includes not being put in charge of the most influential nation in, in the world. Because the Lord knows you don't deserve to have that headache on your shoulders when you're already dealing with the brain in your skull not working quite the way it used to. Guys, if you... If you hated this, downvote it. If you liked this, upvote it. If you have a if you have a dissenting opinion, comment. And as always, take care.